Answering Prayers for Divine Help, May 9th, Accompanied by the Spirit. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou leest down, and when thou rissest up. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 6 to 7. Fathers and mothers, how can I find words to describe your great responsibility? By the character you reveal before your children you are educating them to serve God or to serve self. Then offer to heaven your earnest prayers for the aid of the Holy Spirit, that your hearts may be sanctified, and that the course you pursue may honor God and win your children to Christ. It should give to parents a sense of the solemnity and sacredness of their task, when they realize that by careless speech or action they may lead their children astray. Parents need the guardianship of God and His Word. If they do not heed the counsels of the Word of God, if they do not make the Bible the man of their counsel, the rule of their life, their children will grow careless and will walk in paths of disobedience and unbelief. Christ lived a life of toil and self-denial, and died a death of shame, that He might give an example of the Spirit that should inspire and control His followers. As in their home life parents strive to be Christ-like, heavenly influences will be shed abroad in the lives of their family. In every Christian home God should be honored by the morning and evening sacrifices of praise and prayer. Every morning and evening earnest prayers should ascend to God for His blessing and guidance. Will the Lord of heaven pass by such homes and leave no blessing there? Nay, verily. Angels hear the offering of praise and the prayer of faith, and they bear the petitions to him who ministers in the sanctuary for his people, and pleads his merits in their behalf. True prayer takes hold upon omnipotence, and gives men the victory. Upon his knees the Christian obtains strength to resist temptation. The Review and Herald, February 1, 1912.